God's Wisdom for a Fair and Just World by Dr. Jim Richards. Why I wrote this book. There's one lie powerful enough to seduce the entire world and compel all of humanity into anarchy, rebellion, rioting, and the destruction of civilization as we know it. It's playing out right now in the streets of major cities around the globe. Thankfully, it's not too late to discover the simple truth that can bring peace, safety, and justice to our world. I have traveled to many countries throughout the world talking to citizens and many government officials. In most developing nations, the corruption is unimaginable, the poor desperately oppressed while leaders are wealthy and corrupt. There is no such thing as equal justice. What is happening in America and many of the first world nations is not to make the nations better. It is certainly not to make our streets less violent or to create a better constitution. What is happening in countries around the world is a game of deception. Through corrupt news media, with corrupt politicians' support, our citizens' ignorance is being exploited. There are very real problems around the globe. However, every citizen living in a country where there is rioting, social unrest, and economic instability must realize that deceit is the tool. The exaggeration of real problems provides misdirection. While you're looking at the events unfolding before your eyes, those who intend to steal your freedom are robbing you blind. The goal is the collapse of your economy and the takeover of your country. Even this is a tool. It is not the goal. The goal is an elitist world with no middle class where there are the uber wealthy and those who serve them. Jesus foretold these events and provided tools and strategies necessary to overcome these godless pursuits. In this book, I will remind you of Jesus' warnings and strategies. Then, like any sickness, a proper diagnosis can show us the path to the cure. Believers need to stand for Jesus more than political figures, put godly values ahead of political correctness, and walk in love according to God's word. More than being woke, we are to be the light in the dark world, the salt that heals and the standard that changes the world and restores true justice. Chapter 1, The Outrage of the World The great outrage voiced in America and much of the world today is a cry for fair laws and equal application of those laws, i.e. social justice. A worldwide sense of inequality has flamed this generation dramatically. It has spilled over into the streets, the halls of Congress, and even the aisles of churches, affecting every aspect of our daily lives. Nearly every American believes there needs to be justice reform. But this ongoing pursuit of justice, as it is now, will end in less freedom for all citizens, whether black, white, Latino, Asian, Native American, or immigrant. The sad truth is that it will mean the loss of freedom for both minorities and the majority. The predominant logic for establishing peace and fairness will end with elitist globalists destroying life as we know it. It will usher us into a world that rejects all traditional social norms, values, ethics, and morality. The wisest man to ever live gave this solemn warning, quote, Do not associate with those given to change, for their calamity will rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin those two can bring? Proverbs 24, 21, and 22. 
The Hebrew word for change indicates change driven passion. It refers to following those who attempt to change societal norms apart from God's wisdom for justice. The scripture above connects with Paul's warning in Galatians against heresies, which refers to a party spirit, i.e., group think, political parties, denominations, or merely following the passion of others. This kind of change is driven more by emotion and rage than logic and wisdom. The first step towards solving a problem is gaining a clear understanding of the problem. If we look at the facts and the words of those inspiring the outrage, we discover there is no clear statement of the problem. The accusations have some merit, although the facts are vastly distorted. There is an abundance of emotional rhetoric about the situation, but emotions about a problem have little to do with the real problem. Don't misunderstand. There are real problems that must be solved, but we are being deceived into focusing on and fighting the wrong battle. We are being led to answer the wrong questions. Presently, the wrong questions is a tactical distraction away from what is actually driving the conflict. Emotional outrage about serious problems inspires rage about issues that have nothing to do with the real problem. Sadly, the body of Christ has replaced God's wisdom and Jesus' teaching with a corrupt logic that violates the way of peace. The moment we depart from God's wisdom, the way of peace, and love for one another, we fall into deception. We become co-conspirators with a philosophy that will destroy us all. The power of outside sources is not destroying us. We are killing ourselves because we believe the lies. Quote, So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. James 19 and 20. When emotions drive us, we enter into what the Bible calls the works of the flesh. We give ourselves over to emotions like hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, and murders. We then convince ourselves that all this wickedness can somehow produce a godly outcome. I wrote this book to help you realize what is happening in the world and how we got here and the outcome if we continue this process. It will also help you understand the biblical wisdom for establishing a more just and fair world. Chapter 2. How did we get here? Few believers understand that the failure to interpret God's commandments in light of social justice always leads to a misunderstanding and misapplication of God's word. Sadly, the way Jews and Christians have represented God, one might never consider that his commandments and social justice are not just compatible, but essential to each other. According to Dennis Prager, eight of the original Ten Commandments were about relating to one another. When Israel became a nation and needed to understand how to develop laws for social justice, God gave them a total of 613 commandments. These commandments were expansions on the original ten. This means that 490 of these commandments were about how we would walk in love towards one another. They were about civil order and social justice based on having value for one another. One Hebrew scholar stated that the word translated commandment might best be rendered prescription. A prescription is something given to either prevent or heal sickness. 
God is love. He has called us to be like him. He provided these prescriptions so we would know how to treat others in a manner that reflected his love and justice. Likewise, the word translated law in the Bible could be translated signpost. The law was a signpost. It was never meant to earn righteousness. As a signpost, it would reveal what our external behavior would look like if we walked in love from our hearts. Those who view laws and commandments as mere rules for our outward observance misunderstand God's purpose for giving them. The founders of the U.S. Constitution acknowledge that our republic would only last as long as citizens embrace the morals and values presented in God's Word. Without love, value in their hearts for others, people have no internal motivation to obey the laws. Therefore, all civil laws must have penalties for those who violate them. The goal of penalties, however, was not to punish the offender. The goal was to provide benefits for everyone, the perpetrator, the victim, protection of the innocent, those too weak to protect themselves, the poor, and the observer. Religion has perverted the understanding of what God has done in the past. Most Jews, Christians, and non-believers think the commandments were given for legalistic control or religious subservience. This belief reveals our ignorance of the Bible and history. A serious look at world history shows that God's commandments were the fairest code of civil justice ever given. God's promise to Israel was that his code of justice would provide fair treatment for all citizens and immigrants, peace and prosperity. He also said this would cause all nations to respect and fear them. In other words, this would provide peace and stability against all internal and external threats. The goal was to affect the entire world. Israel utterly failed on that goal, as did the church. All nations self-destruct the same way. Corrupt politicians pass corrupt laws to advance their agendas, increase their wealth, and to expand their power. Everything happening on the streets of America and other countries results from corrupt leaders rejecting God's wisdom for a fair and just world. Are we so naive as to think the leaders in Cuba, China, Venezuela, and other countries were unaware that their policies would thrust their citizens into financial desperation and poverty? Of course they knew. It was part of their strategy to bring about a shift in wealth and power from citizens to the elitists. Leaders making a grab for power and money always know the destruction their policies will bring, yet... They have total disregard for those who will be negatively affected. This is the mindset of an elitist. All nations that fail economically and socially first fail morally and ethically. By rejecting God's morals, values, ethics, and standards, we reject God's wisdom. Observing God's standards as a basis for our social justice is not about being a Christian or a Jew. It's about employing what has already been validated by historical evidence. None of these things are secret, but they are hidden by the greedy and immoral. The mob represents valid issues as their basis for demanding change. However, the changes they require have historically not proven to work. When any attempt for dialogue is requested... They ship the focus and claim that their opponents do not want to solve the problem. People ignorant of history and the facts of the case are easily manipulated and ignorantly follow the mob. The world is facing what the Bible calls iniquity or lawlessness. Its devastating outcome is not the judgment of a wrathful God. It is the fruit, i.e. the natural consequence of gross foolishness. 
The farther any nation moves away from God's social justice, the sooner it will collapse socially and economically. It will most certainly fail to maintain a fair system of social justice. The good news is we can stop this flow of destruction, save millions of lives, and prevent the suffering of billions. But it has to start with believers who are willing to give up their religious ideologies and accept God's Word. Chapter 3, The Lie We All Believe Identifying counterfeit money begins by studying genuine money. The same is true when it comes to identifying a lie. It is impossible to recognize a lie until we know the truth. A myth of monumental proportions is destroying the world. The church is the only body of people who have the resources to expose the lie, but the church has been beguiled. Just as Eve believed the serpent's lies in the garden, the church believes the same lies. Eve and Adam thought they could have a better world by abandoning God and following their ideas of good, evil, and justice. This lie was the Luciferian inspiration that gave birth to humanism, which gave birth to socialism. Socialism is the promise of a fair and just world. It is the hope of a utopian society by the eradication of all inequality. As it turns out, the Christian community is especially susceptible to this temptation. Socialism offers everything the Bible offers through entering the kingdom of God. It is a callback to the original temptation. Determine good and evil for yourselves and leave God out of it. Modern Christians long to see the promise of God's kingdom established on earth. Unfortunately, they seem to ignore the fact that it is a work of the Holy Spirit. Romans 14:17 accomplished through the hearts of individual believers, Luke 17, 21. When someone has a passion for seeing a world as God promised it, combined with ignorance of Scripture, they are susceptible to what the Bible calls iniquity, or in some translations, lawlessness. Lawlessness does not merely reject society's laws, it rejects God's laws and commandments as the basis for justice. Socialism promises the same quality of life God promises. The caveat is in socialism, one must reject God and all his wisdom for justice. The philosophies of man must replace God's standards of morality, ethics, and justice. For the past 60 to 70 years, Everything in American society is aimed at eradicating all knowledge of God. They continued to make God promises, but they tried to fulfill them through the wisdom of men. In the Garden of Eden, the serpent introduced a series of lies to the human race. Embracing those lies has been the basis for every pain and sorrow that has come into the world. Genesis 3.5 exposes the three most damning lies. Quote, For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Number one, by listening to God, you are blind. Number two, you are not really like God now. By disobeying him, you will become like him. Number three, the way to the ultimate life is to determine good and evil for yourself apart from God's word. Socialism fully embraces every lie presented in the garden. It rejects any notion of God as a destructive, limiting, religious myth. The path to ultimate fulfillment is the rejection of all morals and ethics presented in the Bible. The corrupt Luciferian logic says, 
that you are not created in God's likeness and image. Therefore, you have no control over your lives or the event on earth. Good and evil are subjective and based on cultural trends and human laws. In a perversion of compassion, the church has been complicit in a political movement that establishes all of humanities as gods, able to determine good and evil for ourselves. We have now reached a place where we call good evil and evil good. The world was created on the foundation of righteousness. Its inhabitants were to flourish by remaining in harmony with the righteous creator. When righteousness is perverted, all creation is out of harmony with God and the foundations are destroyed. Psalm 11.3 This book will open your eyes to God's wisdom for a fair and just world. This is not a call to give up your pursuit of justice. It is an opportunity to stay free from deception, restore peace, and establish justice. However, socialism is not the real enemy. It is merely the tool, the means, i.e., the only deception powerful enough to deceive the body of Christ and destroy the world. This book reveals the enemy, those who benefit most by seducing the world. It also explains the plans that they have for you and other unsuspecting inhabitants of the globe. This false promise of justice will usher in more pain and suffering and inequality than anything this world has ever witnessed. But it can only happen if we believe the lie. God's Wisdom for a Fair and Just World by Dr. Jim Richards Chapter 4 Identifying the Real Enemy Once we identify the enemy, solving the problem is no longer a mystery. Knowing the enemy usually reveals the intent of his actions. However, when the enemy is an idea rather than a person, practical strategies to resolve the problem are complicated. Those who wish to destroy a country from within do not all fit neatly in the same category. There are usually multiple layers of motivations, starting with the very top, pure evil. However, not everyone participating in the destruction of a nation is working from a purely evil intent. Those who are motivated by greed and power are the culprits. All of the chaos begins in their wicked motivations. Many of the people on the street see a real cause that needs resolution. If a government were only dealing with this group, solving any social problem would be relatively simple. But the voices of those truly pursuing justice are rarely heard. The voices heard by the corrupt media are the agitators, the destroyers, those with money and power. At least two groups of unreasonable people exist between the evildoers and those seeking justice, the ideologicals and the useful idiots. In our modern society, these two groups have much in common. They are usually young, which means they have little life experience, They are taught the philosophies that drive their actions from an influential person like a teacher, political influencer, manipulator, or religious leaders. These groups fall into a role of entitlement through one of two ways. Either they have lived an entitled life with little personal responsibility, or they have suffered because of personal irresponsibility and consider themselves to be victims of an unjust society. The opposite of gratitude is entitlement. It doesn't matter how they arrived at their particular version of entitlement. The result is a justification of irrational thoughts and actions, giving rise to sociopathic tendencies. 
according to marion-webster.com slash dictionary, the definition of an ideologue is, quote, an often blindly partisan advocate or adherent of a particular ideology. Ideologues are generally egotisms. They very often consider themselves and their ideas superior to others. They become so self-invested in ideology, philosophy, or opinion, they are willfully blind to the facts that would prove them wrong. They have one goal, to prove themselves right no matter what the cost to others. Useful idiots, like the ideologues, tend to be college graduates who preferably have never had jobs. They have been influenced by propaganda from the college campuses. Idealism that has never been proven to work fuels their passion. Quoteinvestor.com says, quote, Historically, the term useful idiot has referred to a naive or unwilling ally of a ruthless political movement, especially a communist movement. Supposedly, Vladimir Lenin and Joseph Stalin used this expression contemptuously of non-communists who aligned themselves with their political positions. End quote. One common denominator of those who riot and seek to be in the spotlight is that they have seldom had jobs and never created businesses. When they have had jobs, they were often government jobs that required no personal risk. They have little understanding of how the real world works. Personal responsibility, sacrifice, and entrepreneurial thinking are foreign mindsets and often considered evil or unfair. Despite their ignorance and arrogance and lack of factual argument, they demand that everyone accept their logic as legitimate. These people are irrational, ignorant idealists, believing the end justifies the means, regardless of the pain and suffering they cause. Their arguments are nothing more than propaganda handed down to them in talking points. The average citizen cannot see beyond the talking points, thereby becoming complicit in destroying civilization as we know it. But there is a way to get to the truth. The strategies employed to reach a goal often reveal what is concealed. If we observe the wisdom of Jesus' teaching, we need only to look to one scripture to begin reverse engineering the problem from the cause. Quote, a tree is known by its fruit, end quote. Matthew twelve thirty three. Suppose a person claims to pursue justice for himself while taking justice away from others. In that case, justice is not what he desires. Likewise, if someone says they want peace and tries to bring it about by chaos, peace is not the goal. So, what can we learn from this? Those who fight for change are not always in pursuit of the change they claim to seek. The means they use to accomplish change reveals what they seek. Most people in the world have an excuse for being so easily duped. They've been brainwashed their entire lives by anti-God propaganda cloaked in social justice propaganda. The church, however, has no excuse. We have the very words of God. Jesus came, modeled, and explained how to interpret every word of God. We reject God's morals, values, standard, and wisdom for justice because we do not believe God is as just, fair, and compassionate as those calling for us to reject God's justice. We are so deceived that we are ready to replace God's word with something concocted by greedy, power-hungry, godless, religious, and political leaders. So here are the questions we must answer. Quote, Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? Job 4.17 
Every time we say yes to a law, philosophy, or concept that seems fairer and more just than God's, we are saying, quote, Yes, we are more righteous than God. Our justice is fairer than God's. According to Scripture, this lawlessness will usher us into global tribulation, rendering us so desperate the Antichrist will deceive us. Elitism is overthrowing the world. The goal is what the Bible presents as a one-world government that controls all of the earth's resources. There are a small group of people who believe the planet's natural resources should be preserved for them and their progeny. Elitists have contempt for the common man, but they also have contempt for God. History records that Solomon wrote a letter to the kings in the known world, warning them to rule justly. He talked about the fact that they did not know God and had no hope of eternal life, All they had was what they could amass in this life. When there is no abiding awareness of eternal life, the wicked have no moral boundaries. Modern elitists do not believe that ordinary people have the right to consume the air they breathe because they are taking it away from those who deserve it. George Bernard Shaw infamously stated that every person should have to come before a committee and justify why they should be allowed to live. When speaking among their private groups, I've heard elitists openly admit that hundreds of millions of people will die in the process of establishing this new world order. They say they will try to kill them in the most merciful ways, but the price is justified regardless of how many die. The justification for population control as a means to preserve the natural resources for a select group goes back as far as ancient Mesopotamia. It is encouraged by Fabian socialists like George Bernard Shaw, national socialists, Hitler, the Soviets, and the communist Chinese implemented this ideology through their ruthless policies. In the 1960s America, Bill Ayers, and Bernadine Doran, domestic terrorist organization leaders of the Weather Underground, it was easy to find speeches online. However, in an attempt to hide their plan, many of these speeches have been taken down. The Bible presents facts that there is a real devil and there are wicked, greedy people. History has proven repeatedly that these people, like Lucifer, The one they follow seek only to kill, steal, and destroy. Yet the church and the world have made the fatal mistake. In the face of thousands of years of evidence, they refuse to admit that these people exist. Usually they hesitate to protect the innocent, allowing thousands and sometimes millions to die before admitting the truth. We would have prevented both world wars if we had acted based on God's word. Nearly 200 million innocent people through war and man-made famine died in the communist overthrow of Europe and China. The same wickedness that brought about those horrific abominations is at work in our country and the world. Yet we pretend nothing is going wrong. Religious and political leaders close their eyes pretending they do not see what is happening. We pretend not to see and not to know. Jesus warned that the world would ignore all the signs of the time and plunge into destruction, just as it did before Noah's flood. The problem is not that we do not see the signs of the time. The problem is it's too inconvenient to do anything about what we see.